Hello, my friends. I want to talk to you a little bit about United and States today. States United. Back before the Civil War, this nation was often referred to as these United States, as a verse to the United States. And before 1789, when our current Constitution was written, um, a state was a nation. The words were synonymous. There was, before 1789, before our Constitution was written, this thing we think of as a state, which is a subordinate governing unit within a, a, an overall single unitary government, did not exist anywhere in the world. State meant nation, nation meant state. When this country was founded, our first attempt at making a country was this thing they called the Confederated States, and that's before the one that declared war against us over racism and all that. The first, first pass at making a country after the Revolutionary War was the Federated States, Confederated States, and they were separate nations. The federal government had no power to do anything. Only the states had power. When they met in Congress, each state got one vote. It had nothing to do with population. Each state got one vote. They could send various numbers of, of delegates to the Congress, but each state got one vote. And that didn't work. You know, like we had fought this Revolutionary War, and we had all these veterans, um, and we couldn't even pay them their back pay because the federal government was what owed the veterans, but the federal government didn't have the authority to tax the states, so the states didn't have to send any money in, so they couldn't pay the, 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 the veterans. And that's why, in a side issue, that's why we have Washington, D.C., because they used to meet in Philadelphia, and one year all the veterans came up and they were so mad about not getting their back pay that they ran the United States government, the Confederated States government, out of town. And the governor of Philadelphia, which or of Pennsylvania, which was an independent nation, refused to uh, stand up against the veterans. And, and so they said, all right, we're going to have a place where we're the only boss, where there is nobody else. And so they had the D.C. so that there's no other government entity they have to turn to to protect them. But that's a side issue. The point is that states were nations. And when we created this country in 1789, we, obviously, I wasn't there, um, we persuaded all these nations, separate nations, to voluntarily give up their sovereignty and become members of one larger thing. The closest thing that you can see to that in today's world is the European Union. And Brexit is, is the functional equivalent of, of the secession of the South, only it's over a different reason. But when the European Union was founded, they made a means by which member states could leave. But we didn't do that. When we made our Constitution, they made this deal. They said, all right, we're going to write this Constitution. We're going to let the slave states still be slave states because those are free nations. Those are not what we think of as states. Probably the most important fact that we forget today is that they weren't subordinate entities. They were absolutely sovereign countries. And so these guys got together in Philly and, and they wrote this document and they said if we can get nine of these 13 states to sign on to this, then those nine will be one nation and the other four can go ahead and be independent nations. It's like when they founded you know, the European Union, Romania didn't join, you know, Poland didn't join, and so, or I don't know, maybe Poland did join, I'm not that up on my European Union history, but the point is, it was only going to take nine independent nations to come together as a group and be one nation and give up their independent sovereignty under one nation. 
as it turned out, that's why they put all that slavery stuff in, because there weren't nine non-slave states. If they couldn't get some slave nations to give up their sovereignty, the United States couldn't be born. And I know slavery sucks. I know it was a horrible thing. But this was real politic. They were trying to found a nation from people who were not entirely willing to be a nation because they were free states. They were free nations. And what's happening now, we got 25 states now trying to start a new constitutional convention. And they want to return the power to the states. Okay, think independent nations. Now, what do independent nations do? Well, let's see. They fight wars against each other. That was on the edge of happening when our Constitution was written. They put taxes up at the border. You know, Trunnell Domp over there, the moron in, in the, the orange guy, he wants to cut off international trade and be America first. Okay, what we used to have was we didn't have international trade and we were Virginia first or South Carolina first or Massachusetts first and all the independent countries that had all independently all joined together and threw off England and then became independent countries, they were putting taxes at the border and you couldn't go across, you know, you couldn't ship something across Vermont to get from, from, I don't know, I can't, I don't know my geography that well, you couldn't ship something across North Carolina to get it from South Carolina to Virginia without paying a tax to North Carolina just to ship it across there. This is literally our history. This is why we have a constitution. This is the way in which the Confederated States did not work. Now there's 25 states so far have signed up for a new constitutional convention and their objective is to return power to the states. That's their stated objective. I'm not like mind reading here or accusing them of something. That's their stated objective. They want to return power to the states. If they do so, we will no longer be a nation. We're only on the edge of being a nation now. We have these red states and these blue states, which is a separate topic that I want to talk to you about on a different day. But right now, we are still underneath it all, one nation. If these people succeed in what they want to do, they're going to devolve this nation into semi-autonomous separate nations. And if they do, given the history of humanity for as long as we can track it, there is virtually no possibility that war will not be somewhere in the future, that taxes at borders will not be somewhere in the future, that everything that we know about being one nation indivisible will be over. We must stand up and say our Constitution, deeply flawed though it is, even though we have a Senate which gives extra power to small states, even though we have an Electoral College which gives extra power to small states, our Constitution, flawed though it is, is better than not being a nation. We have to get together and stand up for our nationhood, remain the United States of America. If we wanted to really make this country stronger, more unified, and better, we would make the states even weaker than they are now. And if we make them stronger than they are now, there is no possibility we will get out of it all without bloodshed. Thank you for your time.